Hey guys, this is Alrighty Then, and today's video is a continuation or a number two of my video vlog on retinal detachments. Now I have to start by saying that I am not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I might have stayed at a Holiday Inn Express one time, but that doesn't matter here. So the purpose of this video is to uh, a follow-up on retinal detachments. And since my first video, I've had a lot of questions regarding um, what to expect during retinal surgery, what was the post results, what was the recovery like, and things like that. So I talked briefly about it, but this is I'm going to give you some demonstrations as to what happens in the eye when you have uh, retinal surgery. So, um, so it's been my surgery was in 2016. Uh, if you guys saw my previous video, I was playing soccer. I got hit in the eye with a soccer ball. I had two retinal tears. They were lasered. And after I was cleared by the hospital to fly, I went on my merry way to do my... I had three laser surgeries, and I took my plane like I was going to work. And on my way back, uh, my retina started to detach. And you could see the retina detach. It starts as a veil, like kind of on top, you know. And then you, your vision starts to just go down and down until... Boop, it's all gone. So you start off with um, when the retinal detachment happened, when I knew it was happening, it was on the plane, and I could just see, like I had this little shadow coming over my eye. And as time went on, it just started to get worse and worse, and the, just, the retina until I just couldn't see anything out of the eye. So that's how you know when you get in a retinal detachment. Sometimes when you see flashes... Those are indicators that you might be getting a retinal detachment. Again, I'm not a doctor, but this is just based off of my 24 years of experience in the ophthalmic field. So uh, I've had some questions regarding floaters. Uh, there are some people that are getting anxiety because they have floaters. Floaters are common as you get older. That's just the vitreous starts to unstick itself from the retina and little things start to float around in your vision and sometimes they can be very distracting some people just tolerate it and they have any problems but some people get them really really bad there are procedures that you can have to remove those floaters such as vitrectomies which is when they go into the eye and they suck out all the vitreous which is the gel the gelatin like substance that's inside the eye you're born with it so they, they suck it all out and they just replace it with uh, BSS um, or a balanced salt solution and your body eventually just kind of creates its own and it's always filtering the water out and making more. The problem with that is you are, that is an invasive procedure that you are introducing uh, surgery to an eye that doesn't need it necessarily. But if you have floaters and they are really, really bad, and uh, you know you can't handle it then surgery may be an option so for example when i had my retinal detachment um the second time i ended up getting i had a hemorrhage it was a slight hemorrhage in my eye so i started to see this cloud of stuff going around in my eye and i could look you know, all different ways, and I could make the cloud just do all sorts of stuff, swim around in my eye, and, and just I could manipulate it, and it was somewhat distracting. So I could understand how someone with really, really bad floaters would want to have them removed. Um, it is an option. It is a invasive option if you're going to do it. So you have to think about it carefully. Is it worth it? Do you want to subject your eye to further damage or possible infection, which could lead to blindness. I mean, you know, these are like the worst case scenarios, obviously, but it's just something that something to think about. So in my case, like I said, I had three laser treatments, which is a way to weld the a tear. So imagine, let me see. So Im imagine we have this paper towel and the paper towel is stuck to my hand right if I if I lift it up a little bit then it's gonna start to peel right so when they do the laser they kind of do the laser around the part that's torn 
And then what that does is it kind of welds it to the eye, to the inside of the eye, and then this thing won't tear anymore or it won't keep lifting up. So that's why they do the laser when um, they're doing that type of stuff. Uh, lasers are used to kind of weld the retina to the inside of the eye so it doesn't detach anymore. So that's the first line of defense. With me, unfortunately, the part that had torn was really close to the front in the aura, right behind the iris almost. So not behind it, but more along this edge, not quite the back of the eye. So for example, if this is my eye, okay, and this is my cornea right here, and the bottom is the back of the eye, the tear was like right along the edge. So you can imagine them trying to laser something from this angle to get to the edge right there. So it made it a little bit difficult to laser and therefore they couldn't really get it all the way. So even though they thought they had it, when I went back to flying, it wasn't enough and the eye just, it detached. If your tears are more in the posterior part of the eye, which is more the back part in this area right here where your macula is and the optic nerve is, then that would be easier because the lasers could come straight in and they can get them a little bit better and they can do a laser around the entire tear, which would make it a little bit easier for you to, uh, for it to stick. Okay, so in my case, I bled internally inside my eye and I could see the blood inside. So sometimes that blood gets absorbed by the body, but sometimes it doesn't and you are left with just a bunch of floaters. So for me, I used to remember I used to close one eye and just kind of make my eye, you know, just go around and around and I can just make the, the floaters just kind of swirl. Um, so it, it, it's something that I was prepared to deal with. But I can understand how some people, it's really bad and they have these floaters that are just massive and they block their vision. So for those people, the only alternative would be to have a vitrectomy, which is, again, when they go in there and they remove it, they suck it out. Okay? Uh, so that's one thing. Um, other people have had silicone injected in their eye after a retinal detachment surgery. So there are several different things that you can do to stick the retina back to the eye. One of the things is to put silicone oil inside the eye. So they take out the, they do a vitrectomy, which is they take out all the gelatinous, uh, the vitreous, that's, it's a gelatinous type of stuff that's inside the eye. So imagine if this was the vitreous, I would suck all that out and then I would put uh, silicone oil. Now, silicone oil is heavier than water. It doesn't float. So if I were to put oil in here, notice it might be hard for you to see, but there's a paper towel floating inside this glass, and that's simulating the retina. So if I were to take, uh, if this is my detached retina, and it's just kind of floating around the eye like that, right? Let's say this is my retina and it detached. I would want to put something that's heavy on it so that it sticks to it so that it can uh, weigh on it and, and make it stick to the back of the eye. <clears throat> so one way of doing that is to put silicone oil, which is heavy, and it will hold the retina down onto the, the back and it will help it heal and stick again. Okay. Um, another thing that they do is they put a bubble inside your eye. So again, imagine that this is my eye and I'm going to put a bubble in here. Okay, so by in order for me to put a bubble in here, I have to take this water out. So check this out. And you can see the retina was floating around in there, right? So if I take the water out, watch what happens to that paper towel that's in there, which is the retina. As I take the water out, so imagine if this is a balloon and I'm putting air, I have one port that's sucking the water out and I have another one that's putting air in. So look what's happening. As the air bubble fills in the eye, the retina starts to stick or the paper towel is sticking to the, this glass container, which would be the inside of the eye. So you had seen before that the 
paper towel was stuck to the, it was floating around when I used the pencil to swirl it around. Now imagine if this was sealed and this was an air bubble inside this glass container. So now my retina is here stuck to the back of the eye. All right, so this is my retina that's stuck to the inside of my eye. And the air bubble, because imagine an air bubble, it wants to rise, okay? So the air bubble causes, it kind of pushes on the retina. So that's why they put air bubbles in the eye. So eventually your eye starts to fill up with fluid and all by itself it's always creating fluid and the eye will eventually return to normal and get filled with fluid. So after retina surgery, they want you to sleep upside down. So remember, this would be the cornea, the, the front part of your eye, and this is the back part. So if you're looking at me, this is what my eye would look like. That would be the cornea. And this is the back. So in order for this air bubble to push on the retina, you have to be looking upside down like this. So this causes the air bubble to push up against the retina so that it sticks, just like this paper towel is sticking to the glass. Now, if I put the water back into here, I'm going to try to do this without uh, getting myself all wet. Oh, shit. That's not working. Okay. So look what happened. When I put the water back in, the paper towel just lifted up and it moved. Okay? So when you have a retinal detachment, um, that causes, you know, the retina just floats. Floats inside here, just like this paper towel. That's what your retina would look like in there. So the doctors have to go in and, like, push it down. Okay? And once it's in place and everything is quiet they start removing the water, which I'm going to do again, so you can see. Hopefully I won't make a mess. So here comes the water. So I think you guys have a good idea as to what's happening. So now, so now that I've taken all the fluid out of the eye and introduced air into the system, now that air bubble is somewhat pushing the retina up against the eye. So after retinal surgery, they make you stay face down for approximately two to three weeks. I stayed head down for three weeks which means I had to, you know, brush my teeth like this, sleep like this, take a shower like this. And the doctor allowed me only half an hour a day to keep my head up. I didn't want to take any chances. And I wanted to make sure that I made a mess of water everywhere. And I wanted to make sure that I gave my retina the best possible chance. So um, I stayed down the whole time. Now, they give you they give you a chair, one of those massage chairs that you put your knees on and you put your face into the little hole to keep your head down. And what was really cool is that they also provided me with a mirror that as my head was down like this, I could see through the mirror. So I remember my son, he would, uh, while I was in the, in the back room, in the TV room where he, he had his play stuff, he would bring me the mirror put it underneath me and adjust it so that I could see him. And it was really cool because he was like, Papa, watch this. And he was in there. Um, I was there watching him play. You know, I was his captive audience. I couldn't go anywhere. So that's what happened. So for three weeks, I slept face down. I ate face down. I took a shower face down. Everything was face down to make sure that my retina had the most time to heal and stick. Okay. Now, in addition to my vitrectomy, I also had a membrane that grew because of the trauma. Like It's like a little scar tissue that grows over the retina that they had to come and peel that off the retina. So when I had the, I had two surgeries in the eye, two vitrectomies, if you will. The first one was um, to take all the fluid out, to put the air in. 
And the second surgery, they also took a membrane out the first time. And the second surgery was because of all the steroids that I was taking and because of the trauma, most of the time that will cause you to, your, your lens to become a, a cataract. So a cataract is your natural lens that becomes blurry. Uh, and sometimes, I'm trying to find the lens here. So imagine here in your eye, remember, that's the back of the eye, that's the front of the eye, and this is where the cornea is. So if you had a contact, you'd stick the contact right here. Well, you have a, uh, a lens right in between here. So imagine you had a little magnifying lens right in here, and that would be your natural lens. That lens, over time, and because of the steroids and trauma, it starts to become opaque. So I started to develop a cataract. And so the last surgery I had was a cataract surgery where they removed my lens and they put an intraocular lens, which is a PMMA or a silicone type lens that acts as your natural lens. And you can get that lens to see either far or near. Or if you have, if you can, they, they have multifocal lenses that work for near and far. Because I had a vitrectomy before, I could not get a multifocal lens. I could only get a fixed lens. So I chose to get a long distance lens. So uh, when I'm driving, um, hunting, camping, whatever, I don't need glasses because I could see far. So even with the cataract surgery, I was able to pass my uh, qualifying um, tests for, for my uh, firearms instructor license. And um, I do have some scotomas which are blind spots in my eye. So in my right eye, if I were to look at an X like this, okay, with my right eye, if I were to look at an X, I can see... Uh, the two upper parts of the X, I can see uh, the lower part of, of this X here, but I can't see the lower part of that X. So I can only see uh, three little prongs and not the bottom part. So I have a little blind spot in that area. And depending on what I look at, if I move my eyes a little bit, I can. It, it's, it's interesting because your body really adapts and everything. So if I'm looking with my right eye at the camera right now, I can see the camera and I'm just missing a little spot down here. If I look away just a little bit above the camera, then the camera kind of gets blurry, but it's still good enough. So when I was refracted or they tested my vision, I, I uh, was able to be corrected to 2025. So now I use reading glasses. Uh, because I'm 48, I also developed presbyopia. And I think the presbyopia was brought on by the trauma. It just kind of happened, you know. Um, but when you have both eyes working perfectly uh, in sync with each other, those effects take a little bit longer. But I was just hit with one thing at a time. So I got older, 48 years old. I had the surgeries. I, had, I, I became presbyopic, which meant that the lens inside your eye starts to get a little bit harder. So you have muscles around the eye like a trampoline. You know how a trampoline has springs? So imagine if you're, this is your lens, when you're trying to focus, the, the springs they pull or the muscles pull on the lens and they make it thinner by stretching it out or they, when they relax, they make the lens bigger. So it's just like a camera where it you know goes back and forth. Uh, the eye does the same thing. So the, the lens in your eye changes shape depending on the zonules, the muscles that are around the lens that are holding it in place. So um, even with the surgery, my eye was still, the, the vision was still pretty decent. I do have some blind spots. They ended up doing laser all around the edge of the eye. The doctor just blasted me with a bunch of lasers all around the eye uh, just to make sure that it would never happen again. So I, I gave up soccer and started jujitsu instead, <laughs> which I love and I highly recommend. So um, I think I've answered most of the questions regarding uh, retinal detachments. Uh, 
sometimes if your eye is, if you are myopic, that means your eye is bigger than normal. Uh, imagine a balloon. When you blow up uh, a balloon to, you know, let's say you have a six-inch balloon. And when you blow it up, you blow it up to six inches. So um, most people have a six-inch eye, for example. It's not really six inches. But let's say that you have a six-inch balloon. You blow it up to six inches. That's a Plano or a regular eye. If you put more air into that eye, into the, into the balloon, it becomes bigger. So now you have an eight-inch balloon. And what happens to the rubber as you expand it, as you blow the balloon bigger, the rubber starts to get thinner. And we've all blown up a balloon really big and it, the walls get super thin and it doesn't take much to make it pop. Just the slightest touch and it bursts. So people who are Plano or regular uh, eyed, they have a regular eye size or like let's say that six inch balloon. People who are myopic have a bigger than normal balloon. And people who are hyperopic have a smaller than normal balloon. So a smaller eye tends to be thicker than a bigger eye. Because remember, it's that same balloon. You've taken some of the air out of it. So now the rubber can come back and contract and become a, it's a little bit thicker. So the bigger the eye, the thinner it is. So as a result, the bigger your eye, the retina is spread out over a wider surface so the retina itself is thinner and therefore you have a higher propensity to detach so most people who are in the minuses you know minus four five six even 15 those are the people that have the coke bottle glasses that are really thick they can't see far at all they can see close no problem but when it comes to seeing far they can't see so for people like that it's um you have the tendency to develop uh, floaters and also uh, you get flashes because as the vitreous moves around and vitreous is this gelatinous substance you have in the eye that's kind of attached to everything, the older you get, that vitreous starts to get loose. But within that, as it's getting loose, sometimes it tugs on the, the retina and you'll get a little flash, like a little lightning inside your eye and they'll occur all over the place. When that happens, you, um, it's possible that you, you know, it, those are signs of retinal detachments. Now, they do happen every now and then, and the vitreous lets go and nothing happens. But those are things to watch out for if you are myopic and in the minus. Hyperopic people, the ones with the smaller eye, don't necessarily have that problem because the retina is typically thicker and it, it's not so, they're not so prone to detachments. Um, for retinal detachments, there are vitrectomy surgeries uh, there are lasers that they can laser all around the eye to weld everything or there's another surgery called a buckle which is imagine if I took this eye and I put a belt around it and what that does is it squeezes the eye and it literally squeezes the outside of the eye to the retina to prevent it from um, from detaching so those are different solutions to retinal detachments. You've got buckles that they put around the eye, or you can do uh, gas um, treatments where they take out the, the fluid and they put an air bubble which kind of holds the retina in place. Another one is when they introduce silicone oil, which is a heavier uh, substance that weighs, and it actually, imagine a paperweight on a desk to keep your paper from flapping around in the wind. So that's exactly what the silicone oil does. It's just a weight that stays on top of the retina. And most of the time, after it's been there for a while, they'll suck it back out. They'll take it out again. So that's an additional surgery. So, uh, you know, those are all the different choices that you can have. Um, I hope I have answered most of your questions. And, uh, you know, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Hopefully, I'll be coming out with more videos. And if you guys have more comments or questions, leave the links or leave the questions below in the comments and um, we'll get back to them as soon as we can. So until the next time, this is Alrighty Then uh, coming to you live from my studio. I'm trying to make this thing, you know, a lot better now. I've got st stuff, um, new equipment. So I'm testing it out and this was my, my debut with the new equipment. So once again, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and leave your comments below and we'll see you on the next video. See you guys.